All right. Hey everybody, my name is Tiffany. Welcome back to my channel. It has been, for some of you, a very long time and for others, you've just seen me. So hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me today. We're gonna to be talking about what you should be doing as a junior developer. At my job currently and throughout the last six months or so, we have had numerous junior devs join the team and uh, that's exciting and i've taken a look and as well as interns as well so that's exciting for them too um but i've seen some things and i've also just had a list of my own that i wanted to talk about so i wanted to share with you all the things that i've also had to deal with in my past as a junior dev and things that I wish that I could do differently in hopes of helping you on your journey as well. So I know a lot of you are just starting out. Some of you have been here already, wherever you are in your journey, hopefully you find this very helpful. Um, so anyways, I have my notes. So if you see me looking over, I'm just looking at my notes. Do not mind me. Let's start with the things that you should be doing, I guess. Start on a positive note, let's go. So ask questions. This is an obvious one. And I feel like I have preached about this. I feel like in a ton of my other videos, I've mentioned asking questions, um, the importance that it is. When you're just starting out at a company and this is like your first dev job, there's gonna be lingo you don't know. There's gonna be um, different words that you're not familiar with ask questions when those things pop up because you know you don't want to be five months down the line and they're still talking about this one thing and you're just like I don't know what that is <laughs> but okay um uh, because you don't want to just be that person that says yes I understand but you really don't understand um and that's the whole genius of asking questions is that you just don't get it and everyone expects you to not get everything that's the great thing about the position that you're in is that no one expects you to have all the answers anyway so ask away if you don't feel comfortable asking certain questions in a group setting um so for that example i gave as being in a meeting and they're talking about some sort of lingo that you don't understand if you're not comfortable with asking those questions in that group setting then have a, a quick message with your boss and be like or your team lead or whomever um that you're paired with up for success have a conversation with them and be like hey what does this mean ask those questions so that you can feel a little bit more prepared in your job and kind of understanding what stuff means i would also in that same regard i wouldn't necessarily just like spitball questions to your manager as you think of them instead i would compile a list of questions that you want to ask and um, if you know that you're going to have like a one one on one with your boss or that you know that you have these questions to answer, um, let's say in the middle of the week or maybe you give yourself a deadline of the middle of the week and you say, hey, I'm going to meet with such and such on Wednesday. So, you know, for a week up until Wednesday, I'm going to compile all my questions together and then we're just going to fire them off in this one meeting. That way we can get all this answered and I feel more comfortable if it is something that is like more urgent and you're you're needing the answer now then by all means ask that question but if it's something that can wait um until you have a a uh, conversation with that person then go ahead and do that and have your list of questions and constantly add to that list don't make this a one-time thing this should be every time that you meet with your manager or your team lead or whomever it is that you have these questions and that you are asking those questions and making sure that you are um, as knowledgeable as you possibly can so that you can learn more grow more and be more involved with what's going on with the team. So the next thing that you should do is dive into a ticket, right? Um, so bug tickets, feature tickets, whatever kind of tickets you have, just start working on them. I don't recommend um, just picking one up and, and not looking at it. <laughs> I mean, pick one up, have some context, 
of what it is. And maybe you have no idea what that context is, but you could at least read the ticket and hopefully there's enough information on there to kind of help you at least understand what needs to be done. And the next thing is pair up with somebody on it. So, um, but be specific about what you want. Um, I know at times I have had, you know, been paired up with, with people and um, there's not a clear ask, you know, so before you're pairing up with somebody, clearly at, clearly specify what you want from that person before you meet up with them. So if you um, say, hey, I want to have a conversation with one of the senior engineers on the team um, and you send them a message and say, hey, can we meet uh, tomorrow on this? Um, give context about what you're expecting from this meeting that you're planning on having tomorrow morning or tomorrow evening or whenever this is going to occur so that the other person can also prepare because I don't know about anybody else. I don't know everything either. So it's good for me if you say, hey, I'm working on this ticket. I don't quite know where to get started at it, uh, started on it. Um, would you have time to help me figure out where to get started on it? Uh, you know, what what time is good for you? How about this time? That way I have context of, of what you're wanting from me and we can deliver on that. And I have a clear deliverable of what's expected at the end of this meeting. Um, sometimes I just don't know what's expected. Um, do you just want to walk around a part of the code base? Do you want to walk around the app? I have no idea. Um, but it would be nice to know that beforehand because I too schedule my day and it would be nice to know what all I'm supposed to be doing that day. The third thing is definitely learn about the dev workflow process within your company. Everybody has a different process, what they're expecting from their engineers and everything like that. So make sure that you're looking at documentation if they have it, make sure that you are asking, again, asking those questions so you know what's expected of you. Um, if you have a specific thing that happens at your company, then it's important to know what those things are. Like for us, we prefix all of our commit messages with the number of the ticket. And so if you just kind of start picking up a ticket and, you know, start working on it, but you haven't done the due diligence of actually looking to see, you know, what that looks like, then, you know, you could be missing certain things that you're supposed to be doing. Everybody else is doing it, but you're not doing it. And so you're already kind of uh, getting off into a weird space there because um, you haven't really looked to see what the process was and how to do these things. And sometimes that could take a while to try to, to, to understand but of course, practice makes perfect. So when you do pick up a ticket, have those processes next uh, on a screen next to you so that you're also making sure you're following them at the end of the day, right? The fourth thing is pairing with multiple team members. So I mentioned pairing before, but this one is just kind of an expansion on that. Make sure that you're not pairing with the same person continuously because I have seen where, um, you know, some people kind of have their go-to person and that's fine that you have your go-to person that you um, want to hash out a ticket with, but do recognize that the, your go-to person gets burnt out as well. So you'll want to make sure that you are, you know, kind of spreading the love around, uh, making sure that you are talking to multiple team members. It's not only good for, you know, controlling a little bit of burnout and stuff like that, but other people are working on other things. And so it's important that you kind of recognize their time and that they're doing things um, as well. And so they cannot consistently uh, a pair every single day um, with you to kind of keep going. Now, I will say this, I, at our company, we do have like a collab, we recently have like a collaborator section on our JIRA tickets. So, you know, you can um, spend a little time working with, you know, somebody else on the team and kind of get credit as being a collaborator in that way. Um, but also do understand that like some people may already have tickets in progress and if you keep pinging them, it's like they get nothing done, you know? <laughs> and so it's important to like, 
be weary of people's time, but also understand how other people work too. Because if you continuously pair with the same person, then you're only getting one point of view, you know, and everyone has a different work style. And I think it's important that you kind of understand how others work at this stage too, because it can be helpful to kind of develop your own process from a group of others and what they have done and kind of taking bits and pieces and making it your own. So definitely do that for sure. Let's move forward into the don'ts. These are the things you don't want to do, right? So they, a lot of these are going to coincide with things I've said before, but just bear with me here. So the first thing that you should not do is don't spend forever working on a ticket. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Don't. If you're stuck, reach out for help. Like, do not twiddle your thumbs, get frustrated, uh, keep after it for too long um, because it's just going to frustrate you even further. Trust me, I've been there. Don't do it. Definitely reach out to someone on your team uh, or reach out or and or I guess reach out to your manager as well, because if you don't know who to reach out to for help, they should know as your manager, who to reach out to for help and get some context on what you're working on and find you somebody to pair with. If you are spending time drumming over the same thing for like two, three weeks and there has been no call out that you needed help, it looks as if you're not a good team player and it's like, oh, I'm just going to go in my hole and like, I'll just work on this. And it's like, okay, um, no, <laughs> don't do that. Um, and for some companies, they weigh a lot on your compensation. Like as people know, like people in tech get paid a lot of money uh, in comparison to other careers. And that means your hourly uh, rate is higher than others. And so if they see you have been working on something for way longer and maybe little to no progression has been made, then it kind of looks like, oof, is this person actually delivering? Um, and that could have an, uh, an effect on the bottom line, right? There are some companies that really, really take that into account. And so I would just be careful. Anyways, you don't want to spend so much time working on something anyway because it's annoying and it's frustrating <laughs> to do that. Um, so my motto for anybody is like, hey, take a couple days, really look through the code base, step through the code um, and literally two days kind of figure out some things, make some discoveries, figure out um, where the problem is, how you would solve it and kind of have those things on the table. And if you can't get that done in two days, then you are going to need to ask for some help. Um, but I do recommend that if you already know going in that you have no idea what's going on, then automatically pair with somebody that's going to say, Hey, um, here's an overview, right? But don't let that person just kind of do all the work make sure that that you do your due diligence and that you're just like okay well if you could show me the uh, an area where this is at then i could do some research in that area you know give me about an hour or so and i could look up some things and then let's meet and talk about it and then continue from there and i think that's perfectly fine if you know somebody wants to go and research i'm very much a person that that likes to take the problem and figure out where it's coming from what the actual issue is and seeing how we can come up with a solution and stuff like that so i definitely understand that approach and so hopefully you kind of take a similar approach where you try to do some of the work that you that you can yourself and then uh reach back and kind of ask some help as needed so i think that's perfectly fair the second Second thing is don't think that your questions are basic or stupid or whatever. You know, we've all been novices. We've all been beginners. We've all been new at this. You're not the first one that's been new at this. And you're definitely not the first one that's been new at the company. Well, unless it's a brand new company and you just brought, you, you were just brought on with everybody else. Um, so just make sure to keep that in mind. I mentioned earlier about 
making sure to ask questions, but yet do not assume that your questions are um, dumb, stupid, have already been asked and answered twice, three times over. Um, Because if that's the case, maybe there's more conversations um, within the people that have been there for a while to say, hey, we keep having these same questions. Maybe we should do something about it to kind of have like a glossary or a context or or, or something that will we can point all of our folks to when they first onboard so they know. So do not think that anything that you're asking is just dumb. Like <laughs> ask the questions because if you don't, uh, we'll either assume you have it all together or that you're just fudging your way through it and eventually it's going to all come crashing down. So <laughs> don't be the second person. <laughs> So the third and final thing is like, don't pick to work on the same part of the code base the, the, the whole time, right? So let's say you've been at the company for three months and everything you do is in the user profile section. And it's like, hey, user profiles, I've been taking all the tickets for user profiles, all the bug tickets, all the feature tickets. Uh, it's not terrible but it's also not a good idea because now you only know how that one section of code works and you've been here for three months and you've not even touched anything to do with payments you've not even touched anything to do with like whatever other part of the website or app or whatever you're working on is so make sure that you try to soak up as much knowledge as you can by taking on those tickets that are going to give you a wide variety of areas within the code base because that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that, you know, you kind of start out um, not necessarily favoring one section towards the other. It's okay if you do end up having a favorite. We all have those things with, you know, you know, I'm better in this section than in this section. I don't know anything about this, right? But that doesn't mean that, like, you need to have that expertise coming in. Um, but you could say, hey, I've done a couple of tickets and user profiles now. I want to move over to like giving stuff. I don't know how it works. And then if you have multiple sections of like giving things that happen, um, then that's also another opportunity. You can be like, hey, I want to break this down. We, we give through these different avenues and I want to learn how they all work. Let me start here. And it just kind of, gets you to being involved in other areas of the of the code base as well. So you can kind of understand that too. So it's going to be helpful for your future. And it's also going to be helpful when uh, you know more about the entire code base and kind of how it all fits together. Like you start having like, oh, like these are all little pieces that come together to make this big uh, puzzle. So uh, there you go. So those were the do's and don'ts that I have about that you should and should not do as someone that is a junior dev coming onto the team for the first time. Hopefully you thought this was helpful, Um, whether you are yourself a junior dev or you're a hiring person and you're onboarding people, whatever the case may be. Hope this was helpful for you. I will see you all in the next video. Until then, take care of yourself and be kind to others. And I will see you later. Bye.